Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd the Show where I talk about old play games and today we're going to be playing Sonic Adventure. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and we did a lot of stuff actually. We went through the Sky Deck, fought E-102 Gamma, and we also followed Eggman all the way over to his base over here. And we saw a flashback to something that we'll get to see more of when we follow other people's stories. In this episode, we're going to end off Sonic's story, so let's go right into Eggman's base. I know I said earlier that this entire Let's Play wouldn't be just me gushing about the music, but this song is incredible. Anyways, in these little test tubes that we've got, we have different, uh, hold on, we'll get to this in a second. We have different enemies from Sonic's past. We have Metal Sonic right here, first from Sonic CD. And we also have, I believe this is, I think he's called Silver Sonic. He's the guy from the end of Sonic 2 when you go to the Death Egg. Anyways, for this, right over here we have a bit of a puzzle. What you have to do is you have to make all of these buttons turn yellow. The catch is, when you step on one, all of the buttons next to it also change color. So, it's really a thing of you having to just mess around with it. I think I might... Actually, maybe I'm right back where I start. Wait, no. And then press the middle button. And there we go. Thankfully, that didn't take me too long. I'm not very good when it comes to puzzles. Stage 10, the final egg. This is the final level before the final boss fight of Sonic's story. Again, I always have to specify that it's the end of Sonic's story and not of the whole game. It would be a very short Let's Play if this was the ending of the whole game. I didn't even realize that I didn't grab any rings. There we go. Now we should be good as long as I don't mess anything up. But yeah, I always want to specify that it's the ending of Sonic's story, but I do want to specify that it's the end because, you know, it adds dramatic suspense. Okay, here's something that I've never been able to figure out. Maybe I'm supposed to... Oh, okay, that's how I do. I've never known how to get through that. I guess you just have to... I guess it's sort of common sense, or I don't know how many of you didn't know that, or if you did know that, and I just seem like a huge goof. Get right up here, you want to jump over to the different treadmills in order to avoid the spikes and pits. Make sure you get under there. And this is just going to be kind of how the last level goes, so if there's anything important that I want to point out, I'll let you guys know. But if not, I'll just try to entertain you guys for a bit. Hi, Future Me here. So, during recording I kind of lost my train of thought, and I thought I'd go ahead and just edit in some post-commentary. I'm sorry if the audio for the previous episode, this episode, and the next couple of episodes are a bit wonky. I was a bit far away from my microphone, and when you turn it up, it sounds echoey and weird. But at episode 11, the audio will start going back to this, because I pre-recorded a bunch of episodes. Anyways, back to normal me. So, those little things from... Sky deck, which were like monkey bars that turned into swings, remind me of this one memory from my childhood. I want to say it was like three or four. It was way back when in my backyard we had this like play set, which was like this little house and it had a set of swings. And when I was a kid, I was like, huh, you know, typically I, whenever I swing, I get to a certain height and then I start to slow down and stop. And I was like, I wonder what ha would what happen if I just kept going and I kept trying to get higher and higher and higher and higher and my little 
tiny brain thought that maybe it'll be like a cartoon where, you know, I'm swinging, where I start like swinging round and round and round. But as anyone with common sense will tell you, that's not how swings work. Uh, or at least not how a swing that, that's not how, you know, things work. And so what happened was, once I started swinging, I got really high, and then I just heard the swing, like the thing holding up the swing, go ka-chunk. And I'm like, huh, I wonder what that was. Oh well, anyway, and I just kept swinging, and it kept going ka-chunk, ka-chunk. Because what was happening was, I was going at it with, I don't know if this is exactly a scientific explanation, but I was going at it with such speed and such momentum that it was causing one of the legs of the, uh, of the thing holding up the swing to just go up and then slam down onto the ground and shaking everything in the swing. So, what happens next is, after I'm just like, huh, I wonder what that is, and then just kept going, I just start swinging, and I swing back, and I slip off of the swing, which causes me to, with the amount of speed and momentum I had, to just go flying back forward. I say flying, but it's like, I only went back like five, six feet, but that was a lot to me at the time, because, you know, I'm a little toddler who's like three feet tall and crud but anyways I go flying back and I land not like I just land uh, against the fence I hit the fence and my head comes my head comes down and it hits the base of the fence which sucks for me because my head or not the my head uh, the base of the fence uh, the base of the fence is made out of concrete it's like these little concrete bricks and so my head just slams into this like cube of concrete and it's the first time where I was ever like ever in my life where I felt a pain where I just like couldn't move like I'm sure if I really wanted to I could just move but I was just in so much pain that I just didn't want to muster up the strength to start moving and thankfully my younger brother was there who was very young at the time and I was just like go get mom and dad <laughs> and that was probably one of the worst pains I've ever felt in my life like there are times like where I've been in like a park or something when I was a kid and I've like fallen over and got gotten winded and that felt pretty bad but, like that pain that I felt in that moment is something that I've probably only experienced like one other time. I've got a few stories actually of me just as a young kid not being smart because what kid is smart? <laughs> I don't think I was supposed to do this. Or maybe it is and this is supposed to be really cool. When you're kind of just falling into a pitch black void, you don't really know if this is what the game has intended. <laughs> yeah, you just want to kind of glide across here and then we have one of these sections. These little pink things, I don't know what their purpose is other than just there being a ton that spawn. I don't even know if there's a score. Like. There's not a score up in the top left. It's not like you're gaining points from attacking these things, so I don't really know what the purpose is. But anyways, I think we're almost at the conclusion of this level. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I guess there's a checkpoint there, so it probably wouldn't be the conclusion, because why would you have a checkpoint just before the end? But you never know what's in store. Got our light speed dash. Please don't screw me over. Thank you, and yep, that's the end of the stage. I guess that checkpoint's there just in case the light speed dash decides to wonk out on you. I don't know if that's yeah, a proper bad. phrase, but you know what I meant. If it's not a phrase, then I'm making it a phrase now.
Well, if it isn't my pal, Sonic, I'm surprised you made it this far. Welcome to the final boss of Sonic's story, the Egg Viper. This thing, yeah, you can see that health bar up in the top right corner. This thing can be annoying as all heck. With his first attack with the lasers, you just want to run in circles and he won't be able to hit you. And then when he pokes his head out, you just want to attack him. Or if you want, you can wait for him to make it easier, as we'll see in a little bit. Prepare to hear him say get a load of this a lot, because he says that every time he attacks. Just want to run away from the explosion, and then every single time he goes to attack he doesn't like open himself up. You just want to homing attack, attack these three button looking things, and you'll get launched over to this side. Shoots his laser, blows up, scoots back, and then attack his three little things. Attack him, and this is basically what you're going to be doing for a little bit. Always make sure you have rings. There's going to be rings off to the left and right edges of these platforms. Now he's going to appear right over here. You just want to dodge his lasers, although that can be very tough. And then he'll do this thing where he scoots back again and you have to homing attack the little lights. I don't have a name for them, so I'll just call them lights, I guess. Get a load of this. Get a load of this. Then he'll make these platforms that you just want to jump on and then attack him. Make sure to not miss. Also, his... He'll destroy that platform over there. And also, his like two main catchphrases in this game are No way, I can't believe this, and get a load of this. Now we just have one attack left. Hopefully I can do this boss fight in one shot. He's not gonna get away with this. <laughs> it's no use. Give up. No. God dang it. No. My heart dropped. Uh That can happen to you. You have to be very specific with the with the uh, attacking of the cockpit. Get a load of this. <sighs> but yeah, that's why this boss fight can be so dang annoying, is just because it can sometimes be very finicky and almost impossible to dodge. And it's very weird, because I don't feel like the... Uh, the other boss fights in this game are as hard, except for maybe the final boss fight. See if you can make it through here, Sonic. That's attack number two. Get a load of this. Get a load of this. I might speed up this this section of the video. Okay, I'm just gonna... I'm not gonna homing attack because that might hurt my chances of actually doing it and I might just homing attack off the edge. 
And there we go. Don't put your controller down. You have to still watch him and make sure you don't get hit because he's going in for one last cheap shot. And the camera does something really wonky, so be prepared for that. But once he explodes like this, you know you're safe. And that's the end of Sonic's story. And that's the end of Sonic's story. Personally, a lot of people's favorite part of the game, and can't say I blame them. A lot of these stages were really, really fun. And yeah, I'm surprised it was over in so few episodes. Like, this is only episode six or seven, I think. I think it's episode six, but I'll correct myself. But yeah, now we just go through the credits here. And, yeah, this is the first time that I've really had to go through credits that aren't the ending credits, so it's not like I'm giving the final thank you. So I'll just say that I had a fun time so far, and I can't wait to go through Tales of Story next time.